This is uh, your cult boyfriend with Jane from Style of Substance. Hello. And we recently did a few days ago. You probably saw a video where we uh, reacted to WatchMojo.com's top 10 classic film directors. We talked about people like uh, Chaplin and Fritz Long and Akira Kurosawa. Today, we're going to be reacting to top 10 modern filmmakers, giving you our um, our opinions uh, on all this shit. Uh one thing that we have to note is that this video is is about 10 years old so which means that jane and i will definitely know every director at least probably but it also is dramatically out of touch who would you assume to see on this list um i'm guessing uh tarantino scorsese modern film okay well okay so do you think this is just post 70s or like in the? i think so okay so I think Coppola then, um, mm. there's not going to be a whole lot of foreign filmmakers, judging by the last video. Uh, no, but hopefully there are also no women in the last video. I would love to see Sofia Coppola here. No, I, I think Francis Coppola would be here, though. I don't think she'll be. Maybe an honorable mention. Um, she should be so here. <laughs> Just 2013. 10 years ago is 10 years after Lost in Translation. I don't know. When yeah. I think modern film directors... It's probably going to be 70s and up, but I don't think Scorsese and Coppola. I think those guys are like 30 years before my life. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I, I yeah. don't know what, what their criteria is. Uh, but okay, David Lynch. Uh, oh, yeah. Scors Scorsese. Um, probably Christopher Nolan. The Coens. Oh, what, 2013? So probably Peter Jackson, right? <laughs> oh, shit. I hope not. Yeah, I hope not. You want to, um, and and probably also like, uh, and it, we'll we'll find out. All right, you ready? <laughs> yep. Three, two, one, and go. You talking to me? They're behind some of the greatest movies ever made. So cool. You talking to me? Welcome What's to WatchMojo.com. And today we're counting down our oh. picks for the top oh, 10 on, modern oh, yeah. directors. Spielberg. How'd you do this? He's going to be like number one or something, I think. Mm. Tarantino, of course. We're sticking to directors that have found uh, mega uh, critical Fincher, and Fincher. commercial success yeah. in the 1990s Nolan, yeah. and beyond. Though their success doesn't have to be limited to this period. We're basing our choices on a mix of the director's popularity and I just talent. forget about the Cohen, but this is pretty good overall. They are. Number 10, Peter Jackson. You talk about Peter Jackson. Oh, okay. Peter Jackson. Uh, I'm not, I haven't really seen some of the real old stuff aside from Bad Taste, which I thought was all right. Um, and there's some like charm to Peter Jackson. Uh, I think like. When he's at his most mature, it's probably um, Heavenly Creatures, which, oh yeah, um, honestly, I would just go out and say I think that actually is a great film. Mm -hmm. Um, I and and, and I and I highly recommend that film. But after that, it, it, I, I haven't seen Lovely Bones, but uh, but the uh, the Lord of the Rings films, like, I think there's a lot of good things in them. I think there's also a lot. Of, I don't think that they're really the best structured. Um, as as time goes on, I I find myself just becoming less and less attached to those films because it used to mean a lot to me when I was younger. But after those Hobbit movies came out, I it kind of showed like, oh, some of these issues were also present before. I just they're just better hidden. Um, yeah, and. I, I I have a huge soft spot for Peter Jackson. I hate the Lord of the Rings movies. I think they're all terrible and bad. But um, I like the Frighteners, Heavenly Creatures, uh, Dead Alive. I don't know. I I, I appreciate the man. I, I like mm -hmm. King Kong, too, though. I think that's fine. Yeah, honestly, I think King Kong... I think King Kong is quite interesting. I think at that time, I'll give... Uh, well, not, maybe not even him credit, but, but some of the films that he made. But um, at that point in time... CG artists worked a lot closer with the actual directors and they weren't mm -hmm. so outsourced. And as a result, like Lord of the Rings, for the most part, some of us dated, but uh, for the most part, uh, like the actual CG creatures and in King Kong, especially, like they look pretty cool. Um, uh, nowadays, cool. I feel just... like nowadays they kind of stand out in a very poor but, way. Okay, how do you feel about like, like my, my problem with Lord of the Rings is that people view it 
with the same reputation and esteem that they would view the Godfather. You know, like the Lord of the Rings doesn't even come close. I don't even think it's as good as like Star Wars, honestly. I don't I, either. I, and I don't like Star Wars. You know, I think that A New Hope is way better than any of the fucking Lord of the Rings movies. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I do think that there's a lot of talented people that were part of this. Those sure. Films. Well, he had a whole fucking country making them. There must have been one talented hack. <laughs> I would sure his score is pretty cool. I think the cinematographer is pretty good. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think like right. narratively, the actual storytelling, it it, it mm, that's not as good as people make it out to be. I also find it strange that like you'd rather waste so much money to um with like forced perspective instead of hiring um uh little people. <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> you ready <laughs> um yeah. do I, does he deserve to be on this list absolutely not absolutely yeah not. we still don't know what the criteria is though oh they didn't say. um yeah so for the last for the last video it was kind of unclear if it was like 60s or 70s but then it was also mostly america and mostly white um i don't know just get some like diversity in there and i'm not even saying that to be like on a woke or whatever it's just more like just well, now like, we have a new tired of the same cookie cutter crap <laughs> uh not that i really believe in wokeness but you know let's go um sofia coppola should have been here not peter jackson let's see i wonder this was I, yeah, I don't, I don't know before i don't know what women had rights this could be like nine <laughs> It's gonna be the nineties to two thousand tens, uh, but it might or early two thousand tens, but it might also be like eighties, seventies, sixties. Because I don't know. Because this was made before the classic film director, unless I do believe. Yeah, I don't consider Jackson and Scorsese in the same like school. I feel like people kind of soured a little bit on Lord of the Rings since the Hobbit release, so. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, but they still act like Lord of the Rings is this flawless fucking epic. Like, no, it wasn't. You were you were ten years old, and your parents brought you there every fucking Christmas. Mm -hmm. I feel like it also is kind of like the type of film that all those idiots, like on <laughs> Mahler's podcast and crap, where they just like try to be like, oh, we want to strive for objectivity in film, and then they use that as like the perfect formula for a film like give me a break <laughs> even Mahler has to realize that this film is fucking bullshit it sucks like he should realize it I don't think it sucks I think I think there's a lot of good in it um I just kind of really afraid to rewatch it I don't only um, judge a film like 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 on its own right on its own I think it sucks and it's boring anyway but I also like to judge a film by its legacy by its authoritative idea of itself and Lord of the Rings gave us nothing good in its wake every single thing that Lord of the Rings inspired has led directly to the death of cinema you know what fuck Spielberg's innocent lay this shit at Jackson's feet fair enough let's continue okay and go Though he did make movies in the 90s, his contribution to epic fantasy films alone merits his place on this list. The Lord of the Rings trilogy was a massive undertaking and a commercial smash, bringing together hobbits, elves, wizards, critics and dwarves, fanboys. and more with critics and fanboys. Man, what's that about the sound? <laughs> Oh, who, Jackson's epic adventure, Oscar King Kong, also won Oscars, for the love of but God. it's the Hobbit's box office triumph that cemented his spot that in pop culture. That means it's good, objective. Oh, God, that is not so bad. <laughs> this looks like shit. Why Pause. is that being used? Why is that um, being used like that? Christopher Nolan, I mean, I get that it's fun to rag on him a bit, but, but I do think that within his filmography, especially when he started out, he he's he's had a a number of like decent films. Um, I actually am quite. I actually do quite like following and Memento. And well, I think the Batman Begins is just bullshit. Um, and Dark Knight Rises is, is somehow even worse. Dark Knight's pretty cool. Um, Interstellar is all right for the most part. Um, and uh, I don't know. Prestige is okay. Um, but uh, God, I just really hate Dunkirk. Well, the thing um, about me is that I'm a unique cinephile and the idea that The Dark Knight Rises is the last Christopher Nolan movie I ever watched because I realized over time 
that I, I, I actually don't like his movies, and I don't think what he has to say is even remotely interesting, so I, I cut ties with him at Dark Knight oh, Rises. I don't think he's saying that much interesting of things. I, I do think that some of his films were kind of visceral and kind of uh, um, engaging but uh, and entertaining, but... Um, I think The Dark Knight's good, the one that this clip is from, right? Yeah, um, I think that's a good but even movie, with but... even, with, even with Memento, I think Gaspar Noé did that concept a lot better. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Gaspar uh, Noé should be here. I mean, if this was a list of that actually measured actually, like I don't like Nolan, but Nolan de probably deserves to be here. Um, I mean, he's had a huge impact. I, I would say that a lot of people getting into film for from at least two thousand eight to like twenty twelve, a lot of them probably got into Nolan um, or film through Nolan. You know, um, yeah, I think he was a pretty substantial figure. I just think that um, like he's even more vacant than than Spielberg is or <laughs> even when he has meaning, he's worse than Spielberg. Like like these yeah, Batman movies are like 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 fucking conservative power power fantasies, honestly. <laughs> All right, let's go. OK, three, two, one and go. Christopher Nolan. Known for his neo-noir inspired Is he known style, for his neo -noir look, and dark style? themes, Nolan first played I mean, with our minds in psychological What do you mean? He's inspired by neo-noir? Audiences really took notice of this grit thanks to his gritty Batman reboot, which recharged the superhero franchise and paved the way for one of the genre's finest. What do you mean paved the way? His best performance is He's since Batman. mesmerized us, turned dreams into reality, and I really coaxed the Dark Inception. Knight out of retirement to That's the, the delight of oh, I don't, I don't like Inception. Impossible. Like Inception. Pause. Number eight. Ang um, so I, I just brought huh. up Brokeback. I find it really ironic because I just brought up Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> um, um, I hate Ang Lee. I think some of his films were good. Uh, I think he's a I think, hack. I think he's a hack. He, he's a hack with no clothes, and the emperor has no fucking clothes. He's a hologram. He's a hack. They talk about like how we had such a diverse filmography. Well, that's because you can't pin down his personality or his beliefs ever. He's a hologram. It's like the uncanny valley. Like there's emotionality and heartbreak because he's dealing with really heavy shit, but there's no actual humanity behind the camera. Brokeback Mountain's great for two things: Heath Ledger and Michelle Williams. Those are incredible things. But Ang Lee is a hack. He's always been a hack. No one can jump from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon to Brokeback Mountain to the fucking Hulk with Eric Bana without being a hack. Well, he made a Hulk before Brokeback Mountain. I don't care if I got the chronology correct. Eat, eat drink, point, man. Yeah. Eat, drink, man, woman. Pretty cool. Um, Ice Storm, uh, you know. Terrible. Uh, terrible. The Life of Pi, terrible. Oh, I don't like Life of Pi. Uh, the Hulk is like, I mean, I don't know why he tried to make it an experimental film, kind of. It's like he's trying to eat his cake, either have his cake and eat it too. <laughs> what does he do that's experimental, though? All of flashy freaking, like, crap. I don't think it's experimental. I just think he's a hack that's also not very good. Like, Brokeback Mountain's <clears throat> interesting, but what about his direction is interesting at all? Let's continue. Okay. <laughs> and go. Only. This Taiwanese-American's work is so diverse, you don't always expect what he's going to do next. And so far, that's worked. He's well, broken the laws of gravity, has that... had us seeing green, and has broken like our Hulk? hearts. Lee even managed the technically impossible by turning I, John I, Martell's I, I fantasy hated the Eric novel movie. into a movie. I don't even know. I thought it was like a contrary thing I like. What's more, he's the first Asian to win a Best Director Oscar, a Golden Globe, and that makes a him great. Number seven. David Fincher. He deserves to be here. Yep. Um I uh <laughs> I think I think overall I haven't seen Make, but I think I've seen every other film by him. Um and I think throughout his career started, starting with seven, he's he's turned out like good film after good film. Mm -hmm. Um I'm not like the 
biggest girl with a dragon tattooed person, but uh, but I think like overall, like his filmography is like really good. I think he Sure. has a lot of attention I, I should to have detail, been Gandhi. and in addition to that, I mean, that's the like cost. I just Me think too. that he also brings a lot of, out of his his performers too. Um, Mm hmm. and I mean, honestly, I think Fight Club is his best movie. <laughs> I, I I love Fight Club. I like the Very social gay. network the most. Mm, Social Network is pretty good. But the girl with the dragon tattoo, since we're on the subject, um, I think it's a pervy fucking movie made for old men who secretly want to fuck PTSD damaged goth girls on the subway. I don't understand what the appeal Oh yeah, of this let's movie uh, is. It, this is a complete male fantasy. It, like, oh, there's nothing to it. let's combat rape culture through rape culture. Through rape culture. And I know the Swedish one a lot more than this one, which, by the way, it's such a pointless remake. Everyone was already watching the Swedish one. Like. And Numi, Numi from the Swedish one did better than Rooney. But David Fincher is fine. He made some of the most boring music videos ever. And Alien 3 actually does suck, everybody. It actually is terrible. I don't care what cut you watch. It's a miserable movie. <laughs> I haven't seen that one. But uh, Seven, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> Fight That's Club, pretty good. Social Network, both fantastic films. Um, the game is okay. Uh, Panic Room is not very good. Um, but but Social Network's great. I think that, that more often than not, he's doing something interesting. I think he deserves to be here because he is who I would consider David Fincher like uh, the modern director, right? Like along with Nolan and them. But they're going to uh, confuse the fuck out of me if they put Scorsese on this list, right? <laughs> like It's I'm probably going to be so be like confused. number one or two, honestly. It, so is this just American directors? No. Peter We'll see. Jackson was here. Okay, but directors working in America or whatever. Wait, I mean, he... are you saying there's directors that don't work in America? That's insane. I had never heard that before. Are you sure? <laughs> Watch Mojo doesn't think so. So would Polanski count for this? I don't know what criteria Oh, I'm going to put well, I don't know. Like, this is such a weird version of the list. Like, All right, let's go. but I do think at this point, Sofia Coppola had made better films than Nolan and Fincher. Like, at this point, she had already made Marie Antoinette Virgin Suicides and Lost in Translation and shit. Like, Mm -hmm. once Virgin again, Suicide this is is another great. list made up of, like, weird, weird uh, fucking hyper male power fantasies so far. Like, no one... Yeah, no, no, how uh, they were saying that, like, basically, Peter Jackson's films really appeal to critics and fanboys. Yeah. So, So far, uh, Ang Lee is the most experimental director. <laughs> and girl, and, and, and uh, catering to feminine sensibilities, too. <laughs> Oh my like, god. Yeah, yeah, he's the only one who has so far. um, wait, prediction would there be any women on this list? If it's not Sofia Coppola, who would who would Mo watch Moja put on there? Because it has to be kind of normie accessible. And I, I figure that Sophia is kind of normie ac I love her, but she's normie accessible, right? Like, who Will else there be besides her? will there be any gay directors on here? Well, David Fincher. I'm kidding. Um... <laughs> Aside from Ang Lee, will there be any people of color on here? Spike Lee should be on here, right? He's not gonna be on here. Let's face it. Just just watch. In what world does Ang Lee or what the fuck? What? Um, um, Do you think Woody Allen will be on here? <laughs> no. Well, I don't know. He got an Oscar in like 2012, right? Like, They put him on the best director of all time list, though, <laughs> which is so confusing. hmm. But, uh, I, I just want to see, like, one woman, personally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You ready? Yeah. And go. After the dark and stylish Seven, What's in the Cool. box? Fincher made Fight Club one of the most talked about films of the year, despite disappointing box office returns and extreme violence. He then kept tensions high and brought to life the fantastical tale of a man who ages in reverse. Despite How old extreme are you? violence. Seven, but at Oh a flat yeah, he did old. make that. Thanks to his visually exhilarating work and masterful storytelling, That movie was Fincher miserably also thrilled us bad. with an Oscar-winning drama Oh really? and You a think mystery so? flick. Benjamin Button? I didn't mind it. You... 
get number six. Get real. The... Pause. <laughs> get real. You like Benjamin Button? So you watch that clip that I just watched where he goes, how old are you? And then fucking little old Brad Pitt in a wheelchair goes seven. And you're like, this is good. I haven't seen it. Okay. <laughs> I had to... In quite some time. <laughs> Cohen brothers deserve to be. I don't think, aside from rewatching uh, Fight Club, like two years ago, I, I don't think I've seen any Fincher in quite a while. <laughs> it has been a little while. But I remember being really like a uh, really impressed by actual the composition and sound design and the, the pace <laughs> of social network. Like he, he he hit his stride there. I don't know what he's done since then. I don't really remember. But, um, All right. Cohen um, brothers. Yeah. Yeah, of course they deserve to be here. Um, I think they're I think that Tarantino's a little bit better and a little bit more culturally significant, but they go hand in hand in my eyes. Uh, they really kind of dominated 90s popular American cinema. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think <clears throat> I think they produced a number of good films. I think I think they have a number of kind of like disposable ones at the end mm -hmm. of the day. But uh, but but I think like when they're at their best, they're at their best. And And I think that like Films like Fargo, Big Lebowski, No Country for Old Men, um, Miller's Crossing, you know, and I think I think they they they've been able to produce quite a quite a few great films. So I mean they've done I a like lot them. of great things. I just I fear that um ten years ago, yeah, they deserve to be here. But um now I feel like they've kind of fallen out of fashion and then generally I think that their their philosophy is a little passe. Um I don't think it really yeah. works in twenty twenty two. Three. I don't think it's really worked since 2007. Yeah, exactly. I think that No Country I, and Burn After Reading were like the last really great ones. I could see that. <laughs> I, I, so, you know, somehow Tarantino change. holds on though, and he's been in a time capsule since the 80s. Mm. All right. And go. Cohen Brothers. I'm going to try to make this one shorter. See something down there, Chief? Right. No, I just think I'm gonna barf. Jeez. Joel and Ethan Cohen aren't just directors; they're also writers and producers. I am not Mr. Okay, Lebowski. Like everybody but Fincher. You're Mr. Lebowski. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or uh, you know El Duderino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing. These brothers are known for letting their wit and cleverness shine through, which sometimes leads to dark and twisted results. Look at that f***ing bow. I think you usually, honestly. Whether it's an Oscar-winning crime flick, real quick. cult... My problem, also with the sight and sound list that came out, right? Where, where there, was, there were no, um, like, like uh, Mexican or Spanish filmmakers. There were no, like, like Latin filmmakers on there, right? Mm-hmm. I just saw Javier Bardem, which reminded of his beautiful performance in Iñárritu's Two's uh, Beautiful. Do you think we will see in Iñárritu Two uh, uh, Almodovar? Uh, probably not Almodovar, but do you think we'll see like uh, Del Toro or uh, Cuarón? I think Any Del Spanish Toro has. Character? I think Del Toro has the best shot on here, but realistically speaking, I think that Angley is going to be the only. Which is fucking insane. Racial min Well, honestly, probably the only minority on here. That's <laughs> so insane, dude. <laughs> I, sorry, I had to pause it because I was like, man, Javier Bardem, he's in some great performances. Right. Donnie. So, you ready to play? And go. Please. Or a satirical comedy. The Coen's actually two heads are better thought. than one. While they've excelled especially in, in Western it, it films, the their black comedies have also been critically well, recognized. Like if you ever yeah. carried out your proposed threat, you would experience such a shitstorm of consequences, my friend, that your empty little head would be spinning faster than the wheels of your Everyone swim bicycle back there. You Holy think that's shit. a swim? No! Number five, Clint. What? Clint Eastwood. How do you feel? I mean, like... Yeah. No. No. Uh. Eastwood. 
I've been noticed how you come Moving across somebody <laughs> once in a while that you shouldn't have with. That's me. He'll probably always be famous for his acting, but Eastwood's far I don't from a one trick. Oh, James Cameron. I don't think it's nice. Oh, you James. Laugh. He's All been directing James films Amy. since the 70s, oh, yeah. but came into his own during the last few decades, winning Best Picture and Director oh, Oscars for us. both Unforgiven and Million Dollar Baby. His simple yet effective directing style has allowed simple, him to explore because many he doesn't different have genres one. and garner multiple accolades throughout the 2000s Pause. in the process. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my James. Oh, it is James Cameron. Okay. Um, okay, so I think you've already talked about James Cameron extensively with um, the it one other me. person that goes on here. Yeah. I forget yeah, her Isabel. name. Isabel. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so I think uh, I guess I'm sure my general thoughts of James Cameron. I haven't seen True Lies or The Abyss. Um, or the you don't have Pirata, to. Or that Piranha thing. You don't um, have to. But I you've seen the movies that changed the world. Yeah, I think I think yeah. like, I think I think uh, I mean James Cameron. Like I think he's. I I find it really strange considering how rich that guy is that he's able to like. Uh, that I've seen a lot of like people be really apologetic and want like Avatar two to succeed, which is like insane to me that 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 they think that that's gonna like save like cinema, because it's like, um, it's still Disney, you know. <laughs> um, I, I think James Cameron is fascinating because he's probably the most unfascinating fucking like actual director ever. He tells these amazing stories of like you know. Perfect lo young love being destroyed in this massive boat or fucking like Avatar, right? But what he's really interested in is deep sea diving or a fucking fauna on an alien planet. Like he's not actually interested in anything that he's showing. And I think Isabel put it really well when she was comparing him to Steven Spielberg because they are kind of similar. But something separates Cameron and I don't think it's just skill. But it's something that Isabel said that I thought was funny as fuck where she was like... um. Steven Spielberg is like this millionaire blockbuster filmmaker that just wants to be a bleeding heart liberal, whereas James Cameron is actually a bleeding heart liberal who just wants to be a multi-billion dollar filmmaker. And I, I thought that was a pretty funny way of putting it. I think I think he's good. I think like every once in a while he has themes of family and stuff. But James Cameron is hardly ever interested in what he's showing you. He's He's like more interested in the most boring part of what he's showing you it's it's fun that, he's a weird fucking guy yeah at the same time i think i'd rather avatar to succeed over the marvel movies so um i think like i i'm quite a fan of avatar and also uh the first two uh terminator films um mm -hmm. and uh as you well like as Titanic. Uh, like oh Titanic. yeah i was just gonna get to that i was gonna say like that, that actually honestly that might be my favorite of his films it is it's one of my favorite films Honestly, I love the love story so much. Something that James Cameron didn't even write until the very end. Like he knew there was gonna yeah. be a love story, but he just didn't write that into the the script. Like he I think, he wrote I think about it, water physics. <laughs> That's what interested him. I, I think overall, like James Cameron is is a better filmmaker than uh, really Scott, at least based off of their yeah. like um, their filmography. But unlike Isabel, I don't think that uh, like Alien Aliens is like. Um, better than the original oh yeah did you see my video where isabel was going on and on about how aliens is better than alien yeah i i, I saw that i don't really think i agree with that you know um but, <laughs> I, I, well. I i think that aliens is a lot better than alien but i was surprised by how much isabel agreed isabel hates ridley scott it's really weird yeah, um, but, but 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 yeah i mean i think like james cameron is able to produce some really interesting sci-fi i think like Honestly, if Titanic's not my favorite, it might be the the, the first Terminator film. Um, is it's really lo-fi, and I really love that about it. I think T two is a lot better though, but I understand why why you would mm -hmm. say Terminator one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I, I get more out of Terminator one, I think. Um, I get more out of Terminator two, but that's because you know I like seeing oh, them succeed. The effects. I like the. Uh, uh, I like James Cameron's idea, idealized form of a woman is this um, this woman who like will go to war against the government, go to war against multinational companies. 
um, to, to, to save her child. And then, of course, the world will put her in a straitjacket because of it. He's good. That's oh, why yeah, I like T2 I actually, more. Yeah, I think his depiction of women have been consistently good. I mean, you know, it kind that's of why I like, like aliens more than alien. Like Ridley Scott mostly exploited uh, Ripley. And everyone talks about how Ripley in the first one is this like progressive thing. And it's like, no, like he. He got her in like in her underwear in the last scene and like just just kind of gazed and gazed and gazed. Whereas James Cameron's like, dude, let's give her a machine gun. Let, let's see her fucking tear these aliens apart. And I don't know. I kind of like that methodology a bit. All right. Let's continue. Yeah. Three, two, one, and go. James Cameron. Come with me if you want to live. After establishing himself in the sci-fi and action genres in the 80s, right, the Cameron of, infiltrated like, uh, pop culture with Terminator guy? 2. Yeah. It's incredible. He's so good, too. And I love that it's a cop. But it was his 1997 right? epic romantic disaster film that crowned him king of the world. Jack, this is where we first met. I hate watching the journey out this videos. <laughs> Really Titanic won annoying. 11 Oscars and was uh, the highest grossing movie ever. Over a decade later, Cameron broke that record with the groundbreaking 3D and computer generated movie up? Avatar. Was it? Did he take it? Six years. Three. Number three. Right, I, think so. I think so. All right. Quentin, I Tur love Quentin, Una unabashedly, unapologetically. I think Quentin, I don't think his genius is ever in question, but I think whether or not it's deliberate or accidental, that's the main question. Because I see him do these incredibly sophisticated things, and I hear him talking about why he did those things, and it's for the most vacuous reason possible. So I think he's like an accidental fucking genius. I love Tarantino. I just, um, uh, I, I don't think he understands why what he does is so interesting, but it's still uh, very I think, interesting. I've described him as like a passive uh, postmodernist in a yeah, lot of ways. But he understands postmodernism like arguably better than Godard's films do. Whereas Godard can tell you what postmodernism is, Tarantino does not even know the concept. I'm, I swear to God. Like, is it just a kid who was brought, uh, born and raised on bad exploitation films in like sticky movie theaters or, or by the television screen? And this is the result. Quentin Tarantino, take it or leave it. It's it's the result of being uh, brought up on pop culture and nothing but. Do you like all of his films? No, I hate the one we're looking at right now. I think Django Unchained is fucking awful. Yeah, um, I I mean I'm willing to give like I, I haven't seen. Aside from Reservoir Dogs, I haven't seen a lot of his films in, and uh, was a Upon a Time in Hollywood. I haven't seen a lot of his films in quite a while. Um, but uh, Jingo Chain, I remember kind of being the one that was, I kind of agree with Spike Lee, which, by the way, why isn't he on this list? Yeah. We know he's not going to be. Not, um, not if Spike he's not Lee's, here. Yeah, Spike Spielberg and Scorsese, right? Yeah. Which, why wouldn't Coppola be here then? <laughs> Either. Well, I mean, Francis, maybe... why wouldn't he be here? Well, it, it probably isn't meant to be post seventies. It's probably just like post, like probably nineties to two thousand tens, I guess. Sofia Coppola should be here, but whatever. But Tarantino, like, I mean, you got it. Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown. Those are like a oh, beautiful <laughs> first three three films. Those are beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I love Inglorious Bastards. I like The Hateful Eight. You know, um, I think he is very good, and I think that unlike the Coens, who he gets compared to a lot, like you were saying, like the Coens kind of make a lot of disposable films. Tarantino deliberately tries not to make anything that's disposable, right? Like, you, there's a conversation every time a Tarantino film comes out because they don't come out too often. What do you think of Death Proof? Um, I hate watching it back, but I remember it being a great theater experience because it was released in the Grindhouse double feature with Planet Terror with all the fake trailers from Rob Zombie and Eli Roth and shit. It was, it was a mm -hmm. great theater experience for like a 17-year-old kid. Um, as a film, it's bad, M more bad than it's like deliberately supposed to be bad. I mean, like he missed the, he missed his own mark quite a few <clears> times. <throat> but, what do you think is his best film? Then? Oh, his best film is Pulp Fiction. There we go. I agree. Um, I think it's amazing. The fucking world. And yes, maybe he does need someone like Roger Avery around to like kind because of, i think roger avery understands postmodernism. i think roger avery understands this oh stuff. yeah maybe he Rules needs someone like that stuff. who can like yeah. form it you know what i mean all right let's go yeah and go tarantino <laughs> i 
like the way you die, boy. Well, I actually Tarantino really love introduced us to the stylized it's violence, so pop culture heavy references, and excessive cursing we've come to love and expect with his directorial debut. Why am I Mr. Fink? <laughs> because you're a <laughs> it, all right? I actually love that line. <laughs> The yeah, director then demonstrated his moment. knack for this past speech and planted the seed old. for the growth of non-linear films with Pulp Fiction. You got to appreciate what an explosive element this Bonnie situation Pulp is. Fiction changed I mean, the she world. comes home from a hard day's work, finds a bunch of gangsters like, in the kitchen doing a bunch of gangster shit. Ain't no telling what she's liable like. to do. <sighs> with Kill Bill, he continued oh, yeah, to showcase his penchant great. for different Kill movie Bill genres and has since managed Forgot. two of his highest grossing films to date. Ooh, that's a bingo. <laughs> Number two. Pause. Right, Matt Spielberg now. Somehow Inglorious Bastards is a better Holocaust movie than Schindler's List. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Schindler's List is so bad it's good. Um... <laughs> Um, I I I think in a lot of ways, uh, Spielberg, with Schindler's List specifically, Schind uh, Spielberg is able to really um, I think he's able. It's really strange because I feel like his films tend to have like this nostalgic uh quality to them, and the, in that film, it's almost like calling nostalgia to the familiar. Photo black and white photographs of the Holocaust, while also praising the one Nazi that that did something good once. Uh, and, and I feel like he finds some because because Schindler was like kind of like a like a war profiteer, right? And he was like a uh, yeah, he was a capitalist. Like a, like a, he was a capitalist, which Spielberg probably admires in a lot of ways. And yeah. I think that like Schindler's List is is a very in some ways I do think that it's it's, it's I think it's kind of like in a a really emotionally like powerful film but it's almost like extremely exploitative and something that i noticed about some of his other films like, i see that too spielberg uh I, I like killer purple i think it's just really bad and for empire of the sun is not good you can point out the over the underrated one uh-uh um and uh i think like i don't even like jaws honestly it's okay <laughs> um and uh but but i think when he's at his best is, is when he's like oh, oh by the way Saving private ryan nah I, I think when <clears throat> and then ready player one is just like complete garbage i it represents like everything wrong with hollywood today films like that and like rather skywalker are just a bunch of crap now um, i will say like i watched the fablemans and i think it is a pretty great film. <laughs> i haven't seen it I haven't i seen think it. it's the only time he's ever been honest about mm. making Gentile power I, fantasies That's the only time. I do quite. I actually. I think we. I think I like some of my favorite of his films. Uh, I like Catch Me If You Can enough. I hate but... it. I hate Catch Me If You Can too. I don't know. No. I. My my thing is Spielberg. Uh, what I've always said is that there's not a outside of the Fablemans. There's not a single Spielberg film that I will tell you that I like that I wasn't given to before the age of ten. You know, Jaws mm -hmm. and Raiders and Jurassic Park. Like I don't know if I actually like those films or if I'm mournful and nostalgic for my own childhood. That's impossible to to parse. Like I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I don't actually think he's great, especially if. His he's at number two on the best modern film directors list, but his language is best understood by a fucking infant. Like it, it's he's not actually good. He's he's not. There's a reason. <clears throat> oh, I think like even formally he's not. He's not as interesting as people. Make I think that's what be. I'm talking about. Like it's yeah. it, it's most accessible to a goddamn infant. I I think that I think I think my favorite of his films are uh, his ventures into uh, the science fiction genre. I think I think like dress. Oh, close are, encounters. Uh, actually, I'm not that was big on that yeah, one. <laughs> AI. Oh I was yeah. More like, I was thinking more like AI. Art. You weirdos all love AI. Oh, I don't love it. I I, I kind of like it though. Um, so there's there's AI artificial intelligence. I I'm not. I don't just like it because like Kubrick had vague involvement. I'm not some like idiot like Rob Ager. I'll I say, say I love the Jude like, Law character in it. That was cool. That yeah, was really that's interesting. True. Um, but but I guess like when it comes to, I, I'm thinking more along the lines of like Jurassic Park and uh, 
Uh, Indiana Jones. I guess that's not sci-fi. Uh, maybe it's Isabel that really likes the. Uh, wait, what did I like from him? I don't even know. Like, Isabel loves Spielberg. <laughs> Isabel loves Spielberg. What else? Do, I feel like you like something else. I do too. I like the Indiana Jones films. Um. Oh, E.T. I think. It's, 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 oh, I love E.T. I love yeah. E.T. But that's mm-hmm. one where I cannot remove my own nostalgia from it. Like I don't know if it's actually good. I also don't think. I'm not sure if adults should watch that movie because I do think it's geared specifically for children, possibly even specifically geared to make that child have an involuntary codependency on cinema. I think Spielberg's dangerous. I think that's I think that's cool, but um when it comes to uh his, that's that's pretty well put. Um and, and, and when it comes to, I guess like his influence is just, I think it's very negative overall. Oh, oh yes. and when it comes to like his collaborations with John Williams, I mean, it's really hit or miss. Honestly, John Williams, like I think like his, his work on like Star Wars is pretty good overall, but like his scores that he did with Spielberg for Jaws, uh, or Indiana Jones is also pretty good, uh, but but for Jaws, the comp- you, know, you know, outside of the, the, the theme, it's not that good. <laughs> Listen Even the to theme literally isn't that any... good. Car- like John Carpenter has done a million better minimalist like horror <laughs> themes. And uh, oh goodness, we watch the shark from its point of view as it lures upon like a child's legs to eat them. God damn. And oh my god, like people love to compare Spielberg to his friend George Lucas and say like like uh, just output alone he's better, but. Spielberg has never come close to putting out something as amazing, like a perfect to me as American graffiti. Like I think George Lucas deserves a spot here before over Spielberg. No questions. I mean, Star Wars alone means he's impacted cinema more than Spielberg has. And then American I graffiti so, on yeah. top of that means that he's also a brilliant director. Maybe in your opinion, he just he may um kind of like get a little over his head at times. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh no! I mean, I, American Graffiti is the one Lucas film he, that I would call masterful, but I would still call it masterful. While I like The Fablemans by Spielberg, it's not a masterpiece. It's just interesting to hear him finally be honest for once. That's all right, all. let's uh, let's continue. Oh, he also wants yeah. to fuck his mom like crazy, the little psychopath. <laughs> and go, Steven Spielberg. You're gonna need a bigger boat. After laying you know the what? foundation Lucas for the modern it. blockbuster in Jaws the 70s and hit, 80s, I think Spielberg set box office records <laughs> has in the 1990s. Effects. But I think Lucas is Boy, aware of being right all the time. I don't know. He also nabbed Pause critical and commercial. <laughs> I think there's just something funny about cutting from Jurassic Park jokes to like the Jews suffering in the Holocaust. So, uh, and Stephen doesn't care either. Stephen thinks that that's a great. Oh, he made them the same year. Like, yeah, I think so. Oh my goodness! And you can okay. tell that's the problem. Mm. All right. And but oh, really quick though, just to say something nice about Schindler's List, this woman right here and Beth Davids on on the left, I think she gives the best performance of the entire film as um Ray finds his um like forced like sex slave basically like and and, and remember he has that scene with her where <laughs> Schindler is like no you have to give me her too and he's like no I I like I I'm in his mind he's like I'm like obsessed with her I love her something fucking weird because Spielberg is exploitative but M. Beth Davids I think outshines all of the dudes in the film and since this list isn't going to say anything nice about any women I'd like to point out that M. Beth Davids is highly overlooked in a film that is severely overrated which is quite ironic I'm ready though. I feel like, and I'm just going to say it, because I actually find Shannon's list really interesting, but not for necessarily all the reasons that Spoonberg intended. Um, and, but I think, uh, I, I think it's, uh, I think a lot of people just pretend to like this movie. <laughs> Because they feel like uh, coerced by society. Well, because they feel like it's important. The uh, ultimate like Jewish filmmaker 
making a film about the Holocaust and they think it's like his magnum opus. So they think, oh, I'm supposed to like this. And the only reason why I say that is because I think when I was younger, I pretended to like the movie more than I did. And now I like the movie more for the opposite reasons. <laughs> I right. would have rather waited for Polanski's Pianist, an actually half-decent movie about the Holocaust than whatever the fuck Schindler's List was. All right, and go. Acclaim after taking a more mature turn <laughs> with Ryan. epics like Schindler's List and Saving Private Ryan. Though he's been bashed for being too sappy, Minority he Report to terrible, and so is Lincoln. Oh my God! And remains one of Hollywood's most recognizable and influential directors. I didn't even know it Adam is self-evident truth that things which are Wait, equal is to the same yeah, thing who, it, are equal to, them, to yeah. each and other. Number one, Martin Scorsese. We don't even get honorable mentions. We just go straight to Martin Scorsese, which like brings up so many questions about how this list is conceived and constructed. Like, could, 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 yeah, I'm paused. Like, could Godard have been on this list? I actually don't know. Um, but if we're talking about like more modern Scorsese, that's probably like what? So this is 2013. I mean, they're showing us um, a film directly from 1990. Oh, yeah. In 76. <laughs> it, I don't understand it, how it, Scorsese's it. here and like I'm not gonna argue with Scorsese being on a list like this or or at number one on a list like this, you know? He deserves to. He deserves a lot of recognition for his contributions to film. I'm just confused by the list itself, I, I guess. Mm -hmm. So what's your general thoughts on Scorsese? Because I think we can stop it now. Um <laughs> uh, there's no honorable mentions. What um what are your general thoughts on Scorsese? General, generally speaking, I think he probably is one of the five best American directors. Um, uh, of the last forty to fifty years, like I think that's a huge accomplishment. I think he did a lot of interesting things. Yeah, I think. Uh, generally uh, speaking, you know, we we've talked about Scorsese and videos you can no longer find on my channel, where we could be talking about how great he is. We we covered Silence Once Upon a Time, which um. Oh my goodness. I believe should have been his Imagine, last film. Yeah, I, th I think Silence was pretty great. Oh my goodness, that video, though. <laughs> That's like when I first met you, pretty much. Jeez. You were doing the things that I hate that I see cinephiles do, where us two random people in their 20s got together to try to talk about God and the meaning of life because we watched a Martin Scorsese movie. Boom, kill me now. That's not what I want my film criticism to be like, but... um. Yeah. <laughs> Scorsese is interested in those profound questions, but one thing I will say <laughs> is, is um, uh, uh, Scorsese, I can't say anything bad about him. Even the films that I think are kind of bad, like Wolf of Wall Street, I, I would call it a failure, actually, of Scorsese's, because it is a satire. It is, uh, it is, um, it, it is n negatively viewing its subjects, right? But a lot of people seeing the film don't get that. And if you can't, if you can't communicate satire, like thoroughly when you're dealing with such a vile subject as the Wolf of Wall Street did, and you actually inspire people like Oliver Stone made the same mistake with Wall Street, like you've actually done more harm than good. You know, you preach to the choir and you converted the people who into the wrong kind of things. Um, So Scorsese has made <laughs> mistakes, but... When he knocks it out of the park, Goodfellas, Raging Bull, Taxi Driver, he fucking, that, that ball's still going. Like, he's really fantastic. And as opposed to, like, male power fantasies, all of his men have, like, the most horrifyingly tragic endings, and it's mostly because they're men. <laughs> it's mostly because of these toxic qualities within themselves that they can't come to terms with. Like, Raging Bull, I think we can close the book on, on the toxic male character study. I think no one can do it better. And we can kind of retire that subject honestly yeah i think you summed up pretty well i, I think we probably shared a really similar perspectives of scorsese i haven't really watched a lot of his films in quite some time but i think like i i, I guess i do i actually do like with wall street but mainly because i just think it's like absolutely hilarious <laughs> um but uh I also feel like it is an 80-year-old director pretending to be a very young one. I think that you can see Martin's age there. I think that you can feel that he is pretending.
Maybe There's no bit. fucking way he wants yeah. to film half of that shit. I wish he did. I wish he did this some more. Uh, no, he wanted to film silence. Like that's where his heart is. He's an old. And that's old where man. his heart should have stopped. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <it> should have stopped. <laughs> Um, I I I was kind of annoyed when he made the Irishman. I mean, maybe the Irishman's good. Oh, I haven't yeah. seen it, but it deals um, with the same stuff that Silence did, though. Like, kind of. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. And I also felt like I watched Silence, and I just thought that's just a like perfect mm-hmm. swan song. It really is. And then he, and now he's making another thing. Maybe the next. I don't know what he's doing, but I I think Silence was actually one of my favorite. I of feel the at this point, like like Tarantino. He wants to walk away right after his next movie. He's like, I don't know what film is anymore, but it's not the thing that I thought it was. Scorsese, I think, is more like, if I walk away, there will be no one. No one. No one at all. Mm -hmm. I can't stop making movies. I have to make them until I die because when I die, it's just your heroes will be James Gunn and the Russo brothers. And I can't let that happen. Oh, thank God I'm not seeing those hacks on here. It was 10 years ago, so I think if we saw it now, back 10, 10 years ago was 2012, right? So this is this is made 2013, but yeah, 2013. So, like, I mean, thank god we didn't see Zack Snyder on here, <laughs> he's been reappraised <laughs> since then and into a god. Well, yeah, that's why I stopped. Thanks, thanks to you, thanks to you, <laughs> you did it, you helped. I, I was complicit, but uh. That's why I'm stepping away a little bit. Oh no, Rebel Moon looks okay. <laughs> You're like um, that little girl with the fire, like turning over her shoulder and grinning knowingly. Exactly. No, no, fuck. I think Martin Scorsese can't retire because I can't think of anyone else at his level still making films of from like Spielberg. We don't need him, and he's part of the problem to begin with. Fablemans would be a great place for Spielberg to leave it. It'd be a great time for George Lucas to come back, I'm telling you. Imagine if he came back and just made a sequel to THX or something. <laughs> 1139 or something? Yeah. <laughs> 1138 and a half. And he could do a Fellini thing. Oh, goodness. All right, all right so what do you think about the overall order on here? here? What the fuck was that, though? Yeah, I don't know what the criteria is. They really should have specified a bit more. I was right, and I'm like, it's going to confuse the fuck out of me when it's going to jump from Nolan, Fincher, Ang Lee to Martin Scorsese and Steven Spielberg. Like, these are not, like, at all. Like, the classic film list, I think, was better. Yeah, it was, but it also was still, I don't know. It's kind of strange how, uh, I don't know, it's kind of strange how, uh, I'm not saying that everything needs to be completely diverse but i do think it's really rather peculiar that so much of this is just extremely not diverse it's extremely peculiar that spike lee isn't here yeah i would i mean honestly between all these i mean he's better than peter jackson he's better than nolan he's better than ang lee he's He's up there with he he should be around where tarantino is honestly at the very least you you and i can get into a debate about like who's better but he'd be supposed to be in the top five if it's American, I I don't know what pattern means. Is Why this, like, isn't Sofia Coppola here though? I'm not being <laughs> like like uh, silly when I say that now. I mean, at this point, she was an Academy Award winning director or, or screenwriter at least who had made five or six films like within that time period. Like she has just as much of a claim to it as Fincher or uh, Nolan did. But so, Nolan made a fucking Batman, and Fincher made Fight Club. Yeah, <laughs> like there's no excuse for not having Spike Lee. There is no excuse for that. Um, at this point, there's also I don't think there's what 2012. I don't think there'd be an excuse not to have any Spanish filmmaker either. Uh, at this point, and Yari too had been making films for 15 years. Same with Del Toro. Like yeah, Del Toro their... made Pan's Labyrinth at the very at least. So was, that's kind of like baby's first foreign film, right? And I think yeah, Del um, Toro is more accessible. Yeah, and he should he should have been here over Peter Jackson. No questions asked. Honestly. I and and also like we're still being quite American centric. If the, even if they said American filmmakers, I feel like this is just such a shallow list. Wait, was there a foreign filmmaker besides? I don't Jackson? know. It it doesn't. Well, okay. <laughs> 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 calling Keith. Calling. I mean, like I mean, like at least like uh, Ainley's a Taiwanese American, right? But uh, yeah. 
Um, and Peter Jackson, Kiwis don't even the. I don't care about Kiwis. Okay, well, um, it, it looked like they were very focused on the two on the early two thousands and the nineteen nineties, and if. And I think if you ask like normal cinephiles or something, you would have a much more diverse list. I think that that you possibly would have a Sofia Coppola, but you certainly have a Wong Kar Wai. You'd certainly have a Spike oh, yeah. on there. Um, you, you definitely have Pedro Almodovar was <laughs> making his best work in the '90s, in my opinion. Um, I think mm. that's like the Goldilocks zone of he was still crazy, but but not too safe yet. Like I think uh, I'd I'd put John Waters on there for fucking shits and giggles now. Like <laughs> I. I don't know what the criteria was, but if you're going to have Scorsese and Spielberg on there and not have like, I don't know, Terrence Malick or um, like John Cassavetes, there are so many people who made films in that same time period. Yeah, I'm not sure because Pope, because Francis Pope was not on here. I don't even know what the time period is here. So I don't know how you qualify modern because like, I mean, I might be a little ahead of you, but like, my videos right now pause as shot a taxi driver. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't count. The seventies don't count. <laughs> like that's not modern to me or to anyone. To anyone at all. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, like, whatever. Cinema is. Uh... There's so many huge names that like just aren't there even. Just. Yeah. Fucking normal I guess... people like there were no horror filmmakers on there either like there's nothing there yeah uh, oh well i'm i don't know i'm i'm uh whatever How's topher grace doing over there he looks pretty upset about the state of this list mm -hmm. yeah that's uh, he's the greatest Actually, actor of all. by the by the the makeup of this list i'm surprised that like soderbergh wasn't on here you know like <laughs> like I figured... Or Sam Raimi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go through all of Topher Grace's and like through Traffic and Spider Man Three and be like, why aren't they here? Everyone who works well, with Topher Grace. Yeah, he was a Black Klansman, and, and he uh... <laughs> Spike Lee needs to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh well. <laughs> all right. I think I think that's, that's probably good. <laughs> yeah, that's probably good.